So after your root canal treatment, your dentist usually places a crown or a cap in layman terms and it is fixed onto the tooth. So in this video, we're going to see how this cap or the crown is made. Cap or a crown can be made of different materials like metal, metal ceramic, all ceramic or porcelain, zirconia crowns, emax crowns, gold crowns, etc. The first step is to prepare the tooth. Now, this means that we have to use a burr and reduce the tooth so that the crown can fit perfectly. Then we take an impression of this and the impression will look something like this. We pour the impression to get a model. Once it sets, it will look something like this that you can see here. So you can see the prepared tooth's model. Next, we apply a dye hardener to improve the surface hardness. Once it's dry, we apply a dye spacer. This provides space for the looting cements. This means it gives a space between the crown and the tooth so that there's enough space for the looting cement in the end when we go to cement the crown. Next, we melt inlay wax in small increments and build a pattern over this tooth. After this, we attach the sprue former. This is attached to the bulkiest portion of the wax pattern. This is done to avoid distortion of the wax pattern. Also, you can notice the reservoir here. This sprue provides a channel or a tunnel through which the molten metal will enter the mold. Next step is we attach this wax pattern onto a crucible former. Crucible former is basically the base. It can be made of plastic or metal. After this, a casting ring is placed around it. A wetting agent is sprayed onto the wax pattern. It reduces the surface tension and helps the investment to adhere better to the wax pattern. It also prevents air bubbles. Next, we mix the investment, the investment powder and the liquid as shown on the left. If the material is a metal ceramic, the investment, choice, investment cho uh, of choice is phosphate bonded investments. And we use a vacuum mixer to do this. Then we fill the mold completely. Once it's set, it is then kept in the burnout furnace. The temperature setting varies based on whether it is a gypsum or a phosphate bonded investment. In the burnout, the wax inside the mold is vaporized and it leaves an empty space or a cavity there. So to this cavity, later on the molten metal flows. After the burnout, the mold is kept in a casting machine. Now here, what is shown is a centrifugal casting machine on the left of the picture. After this, pellets of metal alloy is also placed in the crucible former. You can see in the two images on the right side, um, these are the images of the pe metal pellets. After this, the spring of the casting machine is wound two to three times. Then we need to melt the metal alloy pellets that we placed. This is done by a torch flame as shown in the left image. So we use the reducing zone of, uh, of the flame uh, to melt the metal alloy. Remember we, um, we wound the spring of the casting machine 3, 2 to 5 times. So once the metal alloy is melted, the spring of the casting machine is released. So it starts rotating. And the molten metal enters the mold due to this rotational action. After this, the mold is removed from the machine and quenched in water. Now the casting is removed from the investment. After this, we do the rest of the finishing procedures like trimming, sandblasting and polishing. It is then placed on the cast to check the fit, sent for trial and cementation on the patient. And the cementation is done with the looting cement. So this was for a metal crown. So this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this was helpful because when I was studying for NEET, this was a very confusing topic for me and I used to try to learn it by heart, but I never ended up answering the multiple choice questions correctly because I tried to by heart it. So when I got this, uh, when I started looking up pictures, I, I, I felt like I understood this topic a little more better. So I hope this was useful for you. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.